So real churches develop leaders, and as we've seen, the first part of that is to develop learners. And now I want us to look at the second stage of developing leaders, and that is to develop laborers. And we read about this in Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, to his learners, that larger group, the harvest is plentiful. But the workers, the laborers, are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest. I want to suggest to you that there's a difference between a learner and a laborer. The Great Commission said that we are to make disciples and that every Christian is to be a disciple and make disciples. But it's interesting here that Jesus says that when it comes to laborers, we're to pray for God to raise them up. And I take from this that not every learner will be able to be a laborer. There are some learners who are lame. They're not able to labor in the field. There's something that holds them back. Maybe they have damage from the past. Maybe they have a burden they're bearing right now. They can't go out and labor. They can't go out and work. They're not ready to go on to that, that next level. They can still be a learner. They can still meet with a person one-on-one -on -one and make disciples, but they can't go to this next level of being a laborer. And this is really, as we look at it more closely in this passage, in essence, it's, it's the difference between sheep and shepherds. We're all sheep as Christians. We're all learners. But we pray that God will raise up shepherds for the sheep, laborers for the harvest. So what is your profile for a shepherd laborer? What does this kind of person look like? As we pray for God to give us laborers, shepherds for the sheep, what are we looking for? Well, I want to suggest to you it's like ratcheting up from the wheel illustration to a next level what this kind of person looks like. For you see, a disciple witnesses, but a laborer is willing to go into the harvest field and do evangelism. There's a difference. One's ready to give the reason for why they're a Christian to anybody who asks. The other is actually involved in different kinds of evangelism. They're laboring in the harvest. My mother is a laborer. In her 80s, she, on Friday nights, when many people would just be sitting at home watching television, my mother on Friday nights would go to a home for juvenile delinquents, for young criminal boys who were under the age of 15, who were in a place because the court had ordered them to go there. And my mother would go in at the age of 80 and try to lead these young men to Christ because she's a laborer in the harvest. So disciples fellowship. We're committed to being part of a church, but laborers take the next step. They're there at church. They're there in a Bible study, not just for themselves, but to encourage others. 
And that's one of the marks of a person that God is raising up to be a laborer. They're about being around other Christians, not just for themselves, but for the sake of others. They're willing to bleed, to sacrifice, to give. A disciple is to be in the Word of God. We are to be reading God's Word consistently. That's the responsibility of every Christian. But a laborer is willing to dig into the Bible, not just for themselves and to feed themselves, but to feed others. And so that's one of the things that we're looking for, is God begins to stir in a person's heart that they want to and be involved in feeding others and not just themselves. That's a sign that God is answering this prayer to raise up laborers for the harvest. And then every disciple is to be obedient. But a shepherd laborer is not only obeying Christ personally, but is obeying the command to try to equip others and to try to help others be effective in their obedience and in their service. And then finally, disciples are to be centered in Christ themselves but a shepherd laborer is concerned not only for themselves, that they be Christ-centered, but that their church would exalt Christ, that they would be on target with the gospel, with the real Jesus and the real Holy Spirit, the real gospel. And so we're looking at what is the primary process for developing a shepherd laborer. I've suggested to you that this first stage of developing learners, I think the best way to do it is one-on-one. -on -one. I think the best way to develop shepherd laborers, however, is in small groups. Because really the definition of a shepherd laborer is they have other sheep following them. And so by definition, there's something of a small group. And so whether it's a Sunday school class or whether it's a home Bible study or whatever the small group might look like, one of the things that we need to do is pray that God will raise up shepherd laborers. And then in the local church, we look for who these people are and we encourage them and we help them to be able to have good small groups that they're part of. And part of a good small group is, is that we have to be careful to distribute the roles in a small group. Because you see, the problem of a laborer tends to be that they do too much. And so when we were in Moscow, we decided that God was leading us to have a home Bible study. And we had a good size apartment, and so I thought, well, we'll host it. And then, of course, I was the pastor of the church, and so I thought I should lead it. And after a while, I began to discover that people were coming, but they were losing interest because I was doing it all. And so since then, I've made it a point that if I lead something, I do it at somebody else's home. I don't do it at my own home. Because then from the very, very beginning of a small group, you have somebody hosting and then somebody leading, and then people come and there's more involved. And one of the marks of a healthy small group is that there are different roles and responsibilities that there's the evangelist who invites those and hosts their home. There's the pastoral leader who shepherds the people. There's perhaps somebody else who leads people into the word of God, into the apostles teaching. And so we pray and we try to uh, distribute the roles and responsibilities of these small group leaders or shepherds. And we're going to talk more about this in the future, but at the same time, from the very beginning, we want to make sure there's what's called an apprentice. So that if somebody agrees to open their home, from the very beginning in a healthy church, someone else should be being trained so that one day they would open their home. And as somebody leads a small group as a shepherd of the sheep, they should be training someone else and having an apprentice who one day will go and lead their own group. And this is one of the things that makes for a healthy church so that we don't stop with just a few shepherds, but we continue to see God raise up laborers for the harvest. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.